Welcome to the Creative Plan Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey guys, Jim here with Creative Plane Podcast Network. It is August the 24th. And Kelly! And Kelly? Yeah? I, I did. I was waiting for you to jump in there. It was so cute, cute the way you did that. <laughs> so I would like for you not to despair on August the 24th. And do you know despair? why? Despair? No. Is that the keyword? Today is triumph. Oh, triumph! Ha <laughs> ha! Well, of course, triumph is going to be. Hello, Star Wars RPG. Storytelling dice. The thing you want to roll the most is the triumph. The pretty starburst pattern with the circle around it saying you not only succeeded, but you did it amazingly. And the crowd goes wild. That's a triumph. That's right. So I'm thinking today is pretty much going to be a fantasy flight game talk. Because when I hear Triumph, i got to think fantasy flights, whether it's the Genesis system or the Star Wars system, Triumph is when you roll on the narrative dice the equivalent of a natural 20. And almost every player will give you this look like, oh my god, I've got a Triumph, what do I do with it? And a lot of times I want to just say, go balls to the walls crazy, you tell me. As a GM, I love when the players come up with a really good oomph for a triumph. I will always offer you a phone or friend option of the, do you want me to give you a suggestion that's in character that will work? And a lot of times I'll say, let me hear it before we choose, which is the beauty with the Star Wars, is you can still choose because you have the triumph. Or you can just do something like activate a weapon quality or get a crit hit, something like that. But I always like when they use it for something cool and narrative. Yeah. So that way you get more triumph oomph. Yeah, you get that big cinematic moment that just like, pow, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the end of Serenity where they, she's killing everything in sight and then the door opens and, opens and she's standing there Dripping with the bloody blood. axes. All oh, cool. <laughs> well, yes, you intimidated the attackers to not want to fuck with that shit. <laughs> As one guy, I can just see off camera drops to his knees and go, Oh, you're God of Supreme. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I'm getting that tattooed on my arm. Because <laughs> you are a warrior God of Supreme. <laughs> Think about it. Without, without rules like Triumph, you wouldn't have moves like Xena did in Xena Warrior Princess. Mm -hmm. Where she's like doing bad, badass shit with her chakra. Well, I mean, just, yeah. It's the, it's, it's it's the, the Nat knees. 20, but like on steroids. Yeah. It's, and it's all narrative dice, so it can be used narratively in the game. Mm -hmm. It could be even so great as, ha ha ha, we're about to be defeated, and my reinforcements just showed up. Yeah. You know, it's like classic Star Wars, where out of nowhere a ship pops out of hyperspace right there. <laughs> no, not just a ship. A like, battalion <laughs> of ships. Yeah, it's like, it's like, ha, oh, we have you now, and then blink. And now you are completely outnumbered. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, there's this lone ship surrounded to this flotilla around them. And then it's like, yay! <laughs> I would like to surrender. <laughs> we are now willing to discuss terms of surrender. Speaking of surrender, it's like when he's like, they're come, they're not even changing course. And then all of a sudden, poof! All the reavers, all the come, reavers out of the come out too, and they're like, oh shit! You just got a triumph 
for mm -hmm. your plan to defeat the Alliance. Mm -hmm. So you basically will not have an encounter with these but guys. But you also wrote a despair at the same time. They don't counteract each other. That's true, because but you can have the natural eyes. Plan. Yeah. So because that's an example of triumph and with a despair. The despair. Yeah. Which is one thing I love about the game mechanic is you have success or fail, advantage or threat, and then you have possibility of triumph and despair. Because those, those two don't count each other out. So you can have stupid great things happen and stupid bad things happen. Yeah, you can win the battle, but something really horrible happens. Mm -hmm. Like I always joke with everybody, it's when that huge battle is going on over Endor and the rebels have sprung their trap and taken the bunker, but then all of a sudden, prepare to face the power of this fully functioning death sign. And the, the big gun <laughs> blows a ship right out of the sky. So yes, exactly. you turned off the shield, but its big gun is already working. You're screwed. Mm -hmm. So two great, a great thing and a horrible thing happen all at once. Yes, but the triumph, yay! The triumph is magical when it happens. And you know, as a gamer that slightly looks at math, when your character gets up to ninth level and you've got three ranks and skills, you're likely to get more triumph than despair. Well, yes, it all depends. But you know what I find? You're really going to be careful when you originally craft that character. Yes. Because now I'm about to try and dump all of my, and I do have a lot of points though, uh, to try and build up my base stats. Mm -hmm. Because as, like, for the Genesis one, where I am playing a lowly human, you know, so I don't get that, like, extra bonus and stuff, but I can steal a, um, a, a thingy. Yeah, um, you can steal one of the dark sides and the dark the, sides. the points. Um, uh, so it's taking me a lot, but then I will be able to finally upgrade some of my base stats. Mm -hmm. So I'm more in line with, yeah, say, try to get other team members. And I'm like, I don't have that much in the way of... What Kelly's you know, referring to dice is, rolls. in the game mechanic is your characteristics are numbered between 1 and 5. Yes. When you make your characters, the only time you can really crank those numbers up with experience when you purchase them. However, on your talent trees, you can get something way down at the bottom called dedication that raises the characteristic up to 1. Usually, if you want a character that's really great at what you do, you want a 3 or a 4 in that main stat, like intelligence, brawn, agility, presence, willpower... Whichever one you, you want to be good at, you want to have at least a three, hopefully a four. Like I've even talked to a bunch of folks that play droids because they have a lot of points, but they start with ones across the board. Be like R2. Pick a four for the thing you want to be great at and a three for the thing you want to be okay with and don't bother putting points in anything else. And then count on your team to protect you. Because you're now R2 who's really genius and really great, but he can't carry many tools around except for what's yeah. built into his body. And that's why he's always falling over. It's because he's got an agility of one. Do a coordination roll with your one green dice that can become a one yellow dice. So always make sure you get the characteristics where you want them to, not what you want to get them to later on. So spend all your points in characteristics of creation and then talents as you play because you're getting your 10 to 20 points per game session. And you can put points in everything else after the fact other than your characteristics. So, anything else for Triumph? You want to trumpet anything else for Triumph? Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Charge! Um, you know, that was the big thing. Um, uh, yep, no, pretty much. Okay. So, GM, make sure when your players triumph out there and win victories that are big and bold and great, reward them somehow. Even if it's a cheesy award ceremony where the Wookiee gets nothing. I know, that's just wrong. Poor or cheap. if it's some great celebration where the entire kingdom knows their name, which is a good excuse for spies to sneak into the kingdom at that point during the party. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, weddings or titles. <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse than a great, powerful hero having daughters thrown at them. <laughs> just saying. So that is August the 24th. I think it's been a triumph. Yes, I yes. would agree. Not like tomorrow, though. Not like tomorrow. Despair. No, not despair. But something that is an equal calamity. Boom, 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 boom. Alrighty, guys. Thank you for listening.
Down in the depths of the mountain, we dwarves spend our time forging powerful weapons, mining precious gems and metals, and feasting like kings. But after a day of digging for the next Arkenstone, this dwarf likes to come home to a package full of loot. Dungeon Crate is a monthly subscription box service forged specifically for RPG and tabletop gamers. Miniatures, dice, tokens, coins, maps, modules, terrain pieces, handcrafted items, RPG jewelry, and more are yours for only a few gold per month. You even get a digital crate along with a physical one as an added bonus. So are you brave enough to reward yourself with a dungeon crate? By Morden's beard, I hope so. DungeonCrate.com. Let the adventure begin. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.